last night on MasterChef Australia. I suspect some pretty heavy challenges are going to be thrown our way. Finals week began as our six chefs went Greek in the invention test. Unleash the fury. And for Chris, victory. I'll be very disappointed with myself if I'm not one of those final two. Tonight, the final six face the mystery box. If you weren't nervous, maybe you should be a little now. And guest judge Luke Mangan will expect nothing but the best. Don't overwork it and don't stuff it up. But for one chef, elimination. So it's simple, bad pie, bye bye. There can only be one master chef. They will get the chance to work in Australia's top restaurants, publish their own cookbook, and win one hundred thousand dollars. Well, you've just completed a challenge using goat as your core ingredient. Chris, you are today's winner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't expect that. Chris, you won the invention test, and that gives you an advantage. In saying that, it's a secret. This is what Poker Face is all about. Holding the cards, you've got the secret. We can reveal that the advantage that you will have will be knowing what's inside the box. The judges reveal that they're going to let me know what the ingredients for tomorrow's mystery box is, and that's going to give me a monstrous advantage. You have to make two pies, one sweet, one savoury. I love making pies. And there's one other advantage. Fantastic. <laughs> I have to hide this down my pants or something. <laughs> <laughs> what a brilliant advantage. It ain't a mystery box for you. You know exactly what's inside. You've got a book that gives you 500 recipes for pies. There is no excuse not to make this a win. I'm being given all the ammunition I need not to fail tomorrow. So th that's unbelievable. I don't want to go home tomorrow. Waking up this morning, I do feel quite apprehensive. It's the first elimination challenge and someone is going home today, so obviously everyone's quite nervous. It's the start of a daily elimination and, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling quite anxious. I know that Chris has a huge advantage over everybody else going into this and I don't know what it is. Chris has been less than forthcoming with his advantage. He's decided not to share with everyone and I have no idea what, what's going to happen. It's a really good feeling waking up this morning because I know exactly what I'm doing, exactly what I'm cooking. I mean, considering I won that first invention test, it set me up for the week. So I got to get a ton of valuable information yesterday as the prize, and um, hopefully that's put me in a position to, to win today. Chris having an edge, it's a pain, really, because he is very good. We're going to just have to knock him off the old pedestal. Let's see what we can do. Leaving home today, you know, there is a bit of tension in the air that, you know, it's, I think it's very clear that everyone really wants this prize. And it's just at all our fingertips at the moment. So it's actually really stick for all of us to be thinking that we are definitely contenders. First thing I notice are the boxes. Mystery box is back. I have no idea what's under that box. We're all thinking it's some sort of Chris's ideal ingredient. There's a pig's trotter sitting there or something. <laughs> We're all just like, oh God, please don't be that. Please don't be that. 
Well, hello everyone. We're well and truly into the finals week of MasterChef Australia, and the six of you are the last contestants standing. From now until the end of the week, you'll all face a daily challenge, and one of you will be eliminated each day. Until only one person stands in front of us. That person will be crowned this country's first ever MasterChef. So, the finals week. To honour the seriousness of the occasion, every day we will be having a guest judge. That's one more judge to impress and one more highly trained chef who will scrutinise your work. So, to our guest judge today, well, I can tell you, he is a truly world-renowned chef. He owns three prestigious restaurants. He is Luke Mangan. I'm Luke Mangan, chef glass brasserie at the Sydney Hilton, chef owner of Salt Tokyo and South San Francisco. A great dish to me is something that really all the flavours are let to speak for themselves. Pick it up. I think to make a great chef, you have to have commitment, passion, discipline, and you've got to work hard. Hi. Good morning. Nice to morning. see you. I was so excited because I've got one of his books and I've seen him on TV heaps. So it's pretty cool. How exciting to have Luke with us today. If you weren't nervous, maybe you should be a little now. It's a privilege to have this man tasting your food. Are you happy to come in and judge for us today? I'm honoured. It's, it's a great uh, challenge for me to see how these guys perform, so it uh, should be fun. So, the mystery box. Chris was last night's winner, and as such, the privilege that he earned was to find out what was inside that mystery box. The advantage for Chris today could easily be a domino effect. He's got such an advantage that he could win today, and if he gets something like this again, he could win the next day, and he could just kind of domino straight into the final. The spotlight is going to be on me. The judge is going to be scrutinising what I do because I do have the advantage. With the, the knowledge I've got, I should win it, if not come in the top three. So do you want to know what's underneath the box? This was probably the most intense mystery box ever because we just so wanted to know what was underneath that box. It's time to find out. You can lift the lids on your mystery boxes now. <sighs> Where's the instruction book? I see pie plate and ingredients to make pastry. I'm really, really stoked. <laughs> I automatically knew that I'd be having to make some form of pastry, and I don't like to make pastry much. So if you haven't noticed, in your mystery box, you have two pie tins and the ingredients to make sweet and savoury pastry. You have flour, icing sugar, eggs, butter, as well as olive oil, salt and pepper. Obviously, you're making pies. And because it's finals week, it's double trouble. You have to make two pies, one sweet and one savoury. My mouth dropped. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to need a lot of time to make two pies. Obviously, you need ingredients for fillings. Ingredients we have. This is for your sweet pie. You've got so many fillings. Be as creative as you like, but it must taste beautiful. My mind immediately is just going, oh, too many, too many combinations. I'm kind of just buzzing with ideas. This table is laden with ingredients. There's no excuses here. You should be able to produce a beautiful savoury pie. You can use as many or as few ingredients as you want. The only restriction is that you must have pastry in both of your pies. You have two hours to produce your two pies. Luke, what makes a good pie? Pastry is the key. It needs to be rich. It needs to be crumbly, but the taste is really important. The four of us will taste your two creations and we will pick the best two pies. If those two pies are yours, you'll receive a huge advantage going to the next challenge. If yours are the two least impressive pies, elimination. Today, bad dish go home. And that's just horrible. All the months of work could all be over in the blink of an eye. So it's simple. Bad pie, bye-bye. 
You have two minutes to come up and choose your ingredients. Chris, you're up. Pies, two hours, your time starts now. We're told it's a double trouble today. We have to make two pies. We have to make a sweet one and a savoury one. And in two hours, that's just double the pressure. So it's going to be a very interesting day. Chris. Gentlemen. Let's be quite frank. I mean, this challenge is for you to lose. What are you going to do? Hopefully not to lose. I'm going to produce a beautiful fish pie, and I'm going to do a Tahitian lime tart with a Italian meringue topping on it. It's something very unpredictable for you. We all, we were, me and Gary were standing there thinking, oh, for sure, there's livers, there's offals, there's, yeah. you know, onions. Kids. Beer. And yeah, I know. Seafood. I just thought, I won't go down the predictable route with you guys. I'll yeah. do something a bit different. It's a weird double-edged kind of feeling I'm having. Oh, there's going to be way more pressure on me because I do have the advantage. Um, on the other hand, I'm feeling very relaxed because I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm cooking a passion fruit and white chocolate pie and um, I'm doing chicken and mushroom pie. I want to win this challenge. I want the kind of advantage Chris got today. How much would I have loved to have sat for hours with a little book and written down exactly what I was going to do today? That would have been tops. So Julie, she's made pies before. They should be good. Yeah, that's right. I mean, let's be quite honest. Some of the best pies in the world come out of home. That's so, right. you know, I'm, I'm high, I've got high expectations for Julie, and I reckon she might be able to pull it off. Justine, what are your two pies? I'm doing a beef bourguignon pie. Uh, we've got some mushrooms in it, rich red wine sauce. I'm going to put that on straight away because yep. I want it to mature with the flavours and get thicker. Um, yep. And my sweet pie, I'm going to do apple rhubarb pie. You know, for me, the, the nicest pies, the pies that I love to eat, are just a classic, nice, hearty meat pie. Yes, Justine, right you're scaring me already. Uh, because how long do you think it's going to take to braise that meat? Um, I'm going to give it an hour and a half. Hour times. and a half. And how long do you think it's going to take to fill the pie and make the pie? Um, well, it should take about 20 minutes in the oven. The risk is this is not going to be ready. Yep. You don't want to be going home no. today, do you? No, I don't. I'm not worried I've taken on too much. I, I'm worried about my timing. Two pies in two hours, doing pastry all on my own and doing two fillings and cooking it on time. It's going to be a mission and a half. Lucas, tell me what pies are you doing? I'm doing an apple pie. For okay. the sweet. Classic, like Granny used to make? Like my mum used to make. And your uh, savoury pie, what's that one? A chicken and leek pie with mushroom and bacon. So a bit of a, an all-time favourite. Yeah. Pies come from the heart. And the apple pie, I watched my mum do it many, many times as a kid. I just hope I can make her proud. So, Pope, tell me what uh, two pies you're doing, sweet I'm and savoury. I'm doing a rhubarb sandwich with hazelnut and chocolate um, pastry. So it's like an open pie, essentially. Right. I'm actually going to construct um, the pie out of basically two biscuits of pastry. And then I'm going to stew the rhubarb so that they're all upright and try and keep that shape. I think you're very brave doing something really creative. Yep. And I think you're pushing the boundaries in terms of what is a, a classic pie. Yeah, don't... We don't want to see a whole lot of one-dimensional pies, do we? No, not at all. I was really pushing the definition of a pie, but I think that's good. I think it's good to reinvent things and push people's perceptions of what, you know, things should be or shouldn't be. It's a typical Poe in a pressure situation. She wants to do something creative, but if it all goes wrong, she's going to give us something that's maybe fallen over or collapsing, or she could put up that gorgeous rhubarb pie and impress us all. Julia. Hello. How are we going? Well, what are your two pies? I'm making a duck and red wine pie and a chocolate and salted butterscotch pie. A duck was uh, your winning thing, wasn't it, against it was, Peter Evans? Actually. Is that the reason why? No, it's not. But I've just, I think that really rich sort of duck is just a beautiful thing to have in a pie. Confident? Uh, yes, I am. I think when I think of the dishes that I'm doing, I think of the end product and how good that it could be. That if I pull it off, I've got a real chance of winning because they'd be beautiful, beautiful pies. 
An hour down, you have an hour to go. Now is not the time to sit back and rest on your laurels. You need to get on to all that passion, all that love, and bring us the best pies possible. Because one of you will be going home. It's very, very, very hard, I tell you what. Our pies are not the easiest thing to make. You having problems? Yeah, the first one came out lovely. Yep. This one came out a bit, um... Powdery. Don't forget, I mean, a good sweet short crust pastry is crumbly by nature. Yep. And that's what makes it always difficult to line the flan or the pie tin. So nothing wrong with that. I'm hoping to wow the judges with, A, the taste, and B, the, the pastry. If you've got a wow filling, the pastry's rubbish, you're in trouble. At home, I tend to make pies that are probably homelier. You know, egg and bacon pie. It's a, you know, something I cook quite a lot, so I would have been very confident with, but I, I don't know, this is just final sweet. If all I'm doing is pulling out stuff I cooked at home, I might as well go home and keep cooking. I have beer battered fish on many occasions, but I haven't casseroled with beer before. I get the idea of doing that because Chris made a casserole in the house the other night. It was really nice. When I taste the mixture for my pie, it's disgusting. It's bitter, it's horrible. You've got just on 25 minutes to go, and there's a few of you that are worrying me now. A pie, a good one, takes 20, 25 minutes to cook. Don't forget, this is the first elimination. Someone is going home on the back of this challenge. You've got just on 25 minutes to go, and there's a few of you that are worrying me now. A pie, a good one, takes 20, 25 minutes to cook. The rules today are we've got to make two pies, one savoury, one sweet. We've got two hours to do it in. There's an extra special guest judge here today, and whoever makes the worst pies is going home. Oh, how's it going? I'm actually going to make an open pie, like a sandwich. Ooh. And I've got rhubarb going on in there. Have you made anything like this before? I have never made anything like oh. this before. It's just a harebrained um, idea that I had. I do believe in what I'm trying to achieve in this competition. And as much as I've been caned for taking too many risks, I still believe in taking them. And what about your um, savoury pot? I've made a blue cheese. I'm going to make a pasty with four cheeses and it's just vegetables. Good luck, pie. OK, thank you. I got my um, lime tart in the oven, just starting on the prep for the fish pie. The thing that's different about my pie to everybody else is that they all cook the filling prior to putting it in the oven and baking it. With the seafood, because it cooks so quickly, all I need to do is pour the sauce over it. And once that comes up to heat, within 15 to 20 minutes, the fish and the prawns are cooked through. It's an illumination round and I had a big advantage. I want to get the advantage every single time. I really want to start a domino effect. I just want to go, look, 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 finals. <laughs> that would be great. Justine? Yes? How are you looking? Um, are they in the oven yet? Bit messy. I've started to blind bake them. They've been in there for about 15 minutes, a bit longer. Is your mixes made? That one's OK. I've got to do the crepe. The bourguignon is outside just cooling. Come on, let's go and have a look. Can we go and have a look? Oh, uh, yeah. No, we can't have a look? Just really quickly, because I have to keep going. Oh, my goodness. It just needs to cool a bit, because I don't want it to go in really, really hot. Only pop it in the freezer. So it won't fit in the freezer. 15 minutes, you're pushing it for that pastry to be cooked. That's the best I could do. 15 minutes in the oven, I don't think it's going to be ready in time. Um, and that's when I started to get really disappointed in myself because time was definitely not on my side. I don't want to go home today and I'm extremely worried about going home today. Lucas. I'm having big problems with the sweet pastry. It's just crumbly and... It looks a bit dry. Yeah, it does. Oh, you need to be really gentle. Lucas, you are under pressure, mate. As I'm doing my sweet pastry, I'm flustered, but at the same time, I've just got to get this done. I've got to get it out. There's no room for grey. There's no room to fail. I'm pretty pissed off, to be honest. Sweet pastry just came out awful. And I just didn't have time to be delicate. I had to get it in. Mine are not going to look good. So, and they probably won't taste any good because they're going to be raw as well. 
Gary, I'm worried about Lucas's pastry. You know, with a good pie, it's all about the pastry. Yep, we'll have to wait and see. Justine, That's beef bourguignon pie. It's not cooked. I'm really concerned they're not going to be cooked. But she's come up with a good idea for her dessert. She's using rhubarb, she's got a crumble topping on the top. Delicious. And that might impress us. But Poe has made a beautiful little pie, beautiful bit of pasty. Hopefully she can pull it off, and I think Chris is on the money. So there's hope for Poe, hope for Chris, and the rest we've just got our fingers crossed. It's really hard coming back in here not having done any challenges for such a long time. Oh, the pressure and the stress is just, it's insane. It's really getting to me. My salted butterscotch, I basically stuff it up really badly and I have a massive brain fart and decide to add the sugar to the cream instead of the cream to the sugar. So as soon as it goes in, it's like crystallised, seized, which basically means that I've wasted about 25 minutes of time. And I'm just like, oh my god, how did I do that? My butterscotch is basically screwed up, so um, my tart is not working out right now. <laughs> Unless someone else screwed up worse than I did, then it could be going home. It's not cooking. You've got just under 10 minutes. Don't give up. We've got a guest chef, Luke Mangans, here to taste the pies. You're on the back of an elimination. You don't want to go home. You are the top six amateur cooks of Australia. Make it work and make it work now. I hate that cock. <laughs> I think it's about 10 minutes to go when I look at what I've got and realise it's not going to happen. I get the sweet pastry out of the oven. I wish, I wish, I wish I'd never tried to get it out of the flan tin and I just served it in the flan tin. Disaster might have been averted. But I tried to get it out and the edge breaks. And that's it. Truant. You alright, my darling? No. What's wrong? What's wrong? Talk to me. Talk to me. What's happened? <laughs> That's not cooked. The other one's broken. It's not going to cool down, and it's broken. When my sweet pastry broke, and my savoury pie looks like it's not going to cook in time, I think I'm out the door. Absolutely, positively out the door. So I just crumble bits around the edge so it sort of looks like a flat pie. The whole thing's basically a disaster. <laughs> the custard's not set. At the very last minute, I'm just, you know, trying to finesse this puddle on my plate to make it look somewhat appetising. Feeling quite disheartened. You've got two minutes to go, two minutes. There's just adrenaline going. Everyone's just rushing like crazy. I know I'm pushing time. It just really, I'm really scared that I'm not going to be able to put something up in front of the judges. You have 10 seconds to go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it, guys. Put up your pies. Well done, guys. Good job. It's over, and I get a chance to turn around and see what everybody else is doing, and it's just chaos. There's stuff everywhere. There's pots and pans and people crying and uncooked pies. I'm going to be really, really interested to see how some of these things turn out. The challenge is over, and I've got a pie and a puddle. Oof. Um, well, it's almost... You know, three and a half months here um, with one week off when I got eliminated to get this far and just don't want to go home now. No, not yet. Means a lot to me. Yeah. Means a lot to me, but um, I suppose it's disappointing putting something on the plate like that, you know, when you know you can do so much better. I've paid a very high price to be here. I haven't been there for my family and um, perhaps I should have been at home. But 
that I just thought, you know, if I could make it to the end, then, then it would be worth it. I've been planning for the last few months for, you know, this week, and for it to end so quickly is just, it's, it's just really hard because I'm definitely not ready to go home, but judging by today, there's a, you know, I could, so. Contestants, it's judgment time. You've had two hours to make two pies with two rules. One pie had to be savoury, one pie had to be sweet, and both pies had to contain pastry. Remember, your brief is to impress our three judges, as well as our guest judge, international chef, Luke Mangan. I'm sure I don't need to remind you of the severity of this challenge. The winner will get a mega advantage ahead of tomorrow's invention test. And the loser? Well, they'll be eliminated. The whole finality of today is really playing on my mind. To know that someone will be going home is very clear and it's a little bit daunting. The first person to bring their pies up onto the bench is Lucas. I'm taking my dishes up and I'm feeling pretty vulnerable here. My pies look half decent and, uh, you know, I hope it tastes good. Lucas, tell me, what have we got? We've got a chicken and leek pie on the left and on the right, apple pie. Apple pie. Is it as good, you mentioned about your, your mum's apple pie, is it as good as your mum's apple pie? Uh, no, nowhere near it. I just didn't get the timing right, so I had to rush things and didn't get certain elements. All right, let's have a go. First thing I'll notice, obviously, is the look. Looks like a bag of spanners. It's a bit rough. Yeah. And you can see on the pastry as well, it's not quite cooked in the middle, and the chicken mixture underneath it, it's a bit bland. And I'm looking for that big, meaty punch, and it's not there. That lacks salt. There's no salt in there, you know? Two hours to put up two pies. You know what I mean? and you forgot the most important thing, salt. I taste no salt whatsoever. As for apple pie. I like the texture of the apple. It's lacking some sweetness and some salt. It's also lacking some kind of that wonderful ooziness of apple pie, you know, that, that richness and that intensity. Although in terms of shortness of pastry, in both cases, both the pastries are quite short and they crumble nicely. Just tastes like sort of stewed apples. You say there's cinnamon in there? Yeah, there is. Can't get it. Yeah. The pastry, I mean, it's good. It's short. It's got that nice richness to it. Room to improve on both of them. And I think you've got it in you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm feeling OK after I've been judged. I'm certainly feeling a lot better than I did in that last half an hour. The next two pies that we'd love to taste belong to Julia. Oh, I feel so embarrassed. I'm mortified to put those pies up in front of them. I've never, ever made something that looks so messy and just so incredibly bad. Oh, I just want to crawl into a hole and die. Julia, tell me what you did. So this is the savoury pie? It's a duck and red wine pie. The sweet is a chocolate and salted caramel. Julia, the filling's good. It's really tasty, really strong, really meaty. The pastry is really short, really short. So when you put it in your mouth, you get that lovely, crumbly, short crust pastry taste, which is fantastic. In saying that, it's not cooked. So it's a little raw on the bottom and it's very raw on the top. Just could have cooked for longer. They said that the filling was good, which made me feel okay. But the pastry is so important that I'm still really scared about that one. Now, Julia, across to your, is this is a butterscotch pie. What is this? Uh, chocolate and salted caramel. It was originally a butterscotch. Yeah, pie. the butterscotch didn't work out so well, so it was more of a caramel. Pastry is crunchy, 
biscuity, delicious. It's a great dessert. It just cries out for a dollop of something to go with it, whether it's some acidity or some cream or something just to make it even more bad for you. I'm not a chocolate fan. Don't be scared, but I'm not. So let's hope the taste wins me over. It's not a pretty pie, but it certainly tastes very sexy. I love it. Good work. Thank you. Julia, please take your place and return to your station. Next up is Justine. I'm kind of trying to be strong about it. I know there is going to be some positives in my dish and hopefully they will, you know, counteract the negatives. I'm just crossing my fingers that I've done enough to stay in this competition. These rich, dark, meaty flavours of bacon and red wine and mushroom and beef need a really robust pastry to work against them. And this is just too short and too fine. It's a bit like trying to constrain a great big rugby prop forward in a little chiffon nighty. It ain't gonna work and it ain't gonna look good. I completely understand what he's saying about my pastry. I agree, and I was thinking the same. I just hope this is going to um, not be the thing that will send me home. This looks great. That is a stunning filling. It's really nice. That is giddy up material. I love it. Good work. Chris. This challenge is definitely mine to lose. I've got all the information. I've had 12 hours to sit back and contemplate what to do. So if I don't win it, it's going to be a waste of a giant advantage that I've been given. That's the sort of fish pie that even me, with my aversion, to fish pie wants to dive into. Delicious, acidic. I thought when I tasted it walking around that perhaps the sauce was gonna to be too bitey, too lemony, but it's mellowed beautifully in the pan. Pastry's good. Congratulations. All right, on to your Tahitian lime tart. Yep. Really pretty to look at. I love little tarts my type of thing. They're beautiful, full of flavour, full of zing, full of lime flavour. That's a tremendous job. Well done, Chris. I think I've answered the brief really well. I've showed good technique. I've got the pastry right. The judge is happy with the fillings. Overall, I'm pretty happy. The next two pies we'd love to taste belong to Poe. I did feel extra nervous. Even though I thought my pie definitely looked better than everyone's, like it's always down to the flavour and you just never know. It looks really pretty. The little crimps that you put around the edge are perfect, absolutely perfect. The filling's interesting. The reason why it's interesting is because that blue cheese gets in the way of something yeah. and it sort of confuses it a little bit. Okay. You've taken the risk. I mean, I love blue cheese. I like it. Because I like blue cheese. I think your pastry's lovely. Um, you, the balance of everything is really good. So that wins for me. I really like it. So now, onto your dessert. What you've given us is a wonderful combination of not too sweet pastry, that beautiful sourness of the rhubarb, and that richness of the chocolate. And really, that is a, a cracking dessert and possibly the best we've seen today. Poe, I love this dish because I think it's a really clever, modern interpretation of a pie. And you've combined three interesting flavors that I've not seen before on the same plate. Chocolate, hazelnut, and rhubarb, well done. Thank you. 
the judges say some pretty nice things about my dishes and it is like music to my ears because I think I'm safe. The next two pies we'd like to taste belong to Julie. I am devastated to serve up something that looks that crap in the finals week of this competition. It doesn't do justice to the competition. It doesn't do justice to my ability. It's embarrassing. Julie, 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 Julie. Two pies. One pie and something. Yeah. Tell me what they are. Uh, it's a chicken and mushroom pie, and I'm calling the other one a passion fruit puddle pie. Puddle pie? Yeah. That's creative. Well, got to sell it. Julie, it's the prettiest looking savoury pie we've had so far. You've got this lovely little plat round the outside, and it looks like a pie. It's baked, it's golden on the bottom. The only thing I can suggest is a, a finishing flurry. It could be egg washed, it could be glazed, just to make it look top notch. But I think you've done a fine job. Moist, tender, juicy, pastry's great. A little bit more glaze would have been nice. Presentation, it is important. Yeah. I hope, before I taste this, that this pie saves you. I hope so too. Because I have faith in you. Thank you very much. It gives me a little glimmer of hope. Maybe, maybe my little, you know, vomit pie could be forgiven because they like my chicken pie. Your pastry's cooked, I'll give you that. I really do hope this pie can help you. Julie, please take your dishes and return to your station. Thank you. Contestants, it's all in the judges' hands now. Now they've got the pleasant job of deciding who was the winner. That person will be given a special advantage in tomorrow's challenge. Unfortunately, they must also decide who let them down the most, and that person will be eliminated. Well, the judges are ready to reveal their verdict. It has not been an easy decision at all. This is the first elimination of the finals week. Luke, how did our MasterChef finalists fare today? There's some skill there, there's some determination there, and there's some love. And they're, to me, good qualities of a cook. It's a sad moment because we're going to say goodbye to an exceptionally good cook. I will call out some names. If I call out yours, please step forward. Julia. Julie. Lucas. Unfortunately, you are our bottom three. I know that my dish was just shoddy work, so I'm unsurprised, but still really disappointed in myself. Julia, what we didn't like about your dishes was the uncooked pastry on your duck pie, which is unacceptable in any restaurant or cafe in Australia. That said, you're still safe in the competition. Thank God. Your dessert? was delicious. It definitely saved you today. Please step back in line. Julian Lucas, it comes down to you too. My heart's pounding. I'm standing there waiting. Is this it? Am I gone? Have I somehow managed to scrape through? It's a pretty big moment. Julie, this really wasn't one of your finest moments. The chicken pie was homely but the puddle summed up the catalogue of disasters you had today cooking. Lucas, both needed seasoning, both needed more oomph in terms of their filling, but the pastry was pretty good. For one of you, the dream is about to end. 
After much discussion, Lucas, you no longer have a place in the MasterChef kitchen. I didn't nail it today. I, I knew there was no time for Gray. I was praying there'd be a twist, but it wasn't. It's time for me to go. Mate, you have been an absolute pleasure in this competition. What you've brought is that, wow, this guy's already succeeded in, you know, another part of his life. You should be very proud of yourself. You're definitely a role model. Well done, man. Thank you, George. Cheers. Lucas, don't undersell yourself. You've cooked some great dishes. You've lost today, but how much have you gained? I like it. I'm gonna say very solidly, it's your yes to me. Oh, thank you. Congratulations. You cooked the best two-course meal overall. I gave Lucas's dish an eight. That makes you the winner of our Celebrity Chef Challenge. It's so nice to be able to put your heart on the plate and see you guys enjoy it. I'm going to learn from those little mistakes, take it to the cafe and get it right. Well, Lucas, it's time for you to leave the MasterChef kitchen for one last time. Good luck, huh? Good luck, guys. I'm walking out of MasterChef kitchen today and I'm happy with what I've done. I'm proud of what I've done. Now I've got a little cafe. It's all about the coffee. And now I can be a bit more about the food. There's going to be so many fond memories from, the, from these few months and so many things I've learnt that I can use in my outside life, as you would say. So, lucky me. Poe, can you take a step forward? Chris and Justine. Congratulations, you're our top three today. Well done. But there can only be one winner. The winner of today's challenge is Poe. Oh, it's me. <laughs> Yay! I'm elated. I'm just beside myself because this is huge, huge advantage, massive. Well, Po, two beautiful looking dishes. Well executed, interesting idea, so congratulations. And that chocolate sablé was one of the best I've ever tasted. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Look, I'm not annoyed that Po won. She did some really interesting dishes. And look, she's deadly serious about winning this competition. Well, Luke, it's been an absolute delight having you here today. Thank you very much for having me. Good luck. See ya. See you guys. See you soon, Luke. Thanks. Thank you. Well, Poe, in a moment, you'll get to find out what your advantage is in tomorrow's challenge. The rest of you, you get to go home now and get some sleep because, you know what? Tomorrow, there's another elimination challenge. We'll see you back here in the morning. Today was a massive day. I just feel so drained. But thank God I didn't get eliminated. I'm so disappointed with myself, but at least I've got another chance to redeem myself tomorrow, and I can't wait. Poe, tomorrow, it's the invention test. And the advantage, there's a theme, and you're gonna pick it. Brilliant. <laughs> and Poe? Bear this in mind. The person that doesn't deliver on your theme will be eliminated. If I play this cleverly, I am so going to be able to win it and get another advantage. I know what I want to do. Tomorrow night on MasterChef Australia. Poe has the advantage of choosing a theme, we're screwed. The five remaining chefs face the invention test. Unleash the apocalypse. I could have been a lot nastier. <laughs> With another elimination at stake, it's a fight for survival. We are at the business end of this competition. This is where it gets serious. And celebrity chef Matt Moran returns as guest judge. This really doesn't appeal to me whatsoever. The countdown continues as only one can become Australia's first MasterChef. Give me one more day and I promise I'll come in and I'll do better.